This time on Gentleman Crafter TV I would like to share with you why I chose to make some of my own stamp storage. One of the reasons was to get my craft room organised and I have a lot of these unmounted rubber stamps from Stampscapes. They're beautiful stamps for making scenery images as you can see in the um, leaflet that came with this sheet. But the issue I found is I really find it hard to store them. So far I've been using this cardboard wallet but it's becoming quite dog-eared and, and ragged. So I wanted something a bit more long-lasting and something that will protect the stamps as well. Just before I start showing you that though I'm going to apply some Zig two-way glue to the back of the unmounted stamp. And the reason I'm doing that now is because then it'll have a chance to dry. It goes on blue which is when it's a permanent bond, but when it dries clear it's a temporary bond, so it's going to act like a, a temporary cling sheet. Now, these are the stamp storage solutions that I came up with, and they are simple plastic wallets that I can slide um, a reference card and the stamp into. And I even went as far as making the reference card too, as you can see in this example. To make these, I've just generally used some really basic equipment. I do have um, a hot laminating machine, and I picked up these laminating pouches from Aldi. A couple of quid for a whole bunch of them. And it's only going to take me three of those to make four of these plastic wallets. So in terms of value for money, it's fantastic. And you can see how many I've already created, and I've still got loads left. Another reason I wanted to create something like this was because I can then um, flick through them and, and have a look at them uh, without having to pull the whole lot out and sort through them again um, and even just have the stamped reference sheets as well so that I can check out the designs. Plus they also fit perfectly in this storage box that I got from Ikea a while back. Okay, let's make a start. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. And then I'll get some of the laminating pouches. Now, as I said, um, I managed to figure out the sizing dimensions so that I can get four pockets from three sheets of laminate. Obviously if you wanted to do these you can do them custom sized, just measure up the size that you want your reference card and then add around about a centimetre and a half, um, which I think is about half an inch, um, to two of the edges, the long and the short edge, and then you'll have your dimensions to work from. What I'm doing though initially is just chopping off the ends that have the rounded corners. That's just a personal thing. And then chopping the long edge down to 28 centimeters and to be fair the only reason I did this is because I could work out what half of that was <laughs> so I'm then chopping that whole sheet down to 14 centimeters and then I'm chopping each of those parts down by half as well now I didn't quite measure half I just used my paper trimmers ten and a half mark which was the edge of the trimmer. A bit lazy but it worked in the end. Now laminating pouches have two sheets obviously so I've now got four pairs of sheets I'm going to grab another laminating pouch and open it up and I'm going to align one edge with one of the lines on my cutting mat and the reason I'm doing this is because it's going to help me trim it up later. 
I'm then taking one of the trimmed down pairs and I'm going to flip each sheet. So basically a laminating sheet has a glossy side and a matte side. So I'm turning those so that the glossy sides are facing each other and then I'm going to put the matte sides onto the other laminating sheet. And again I'm using the grid on my cutting mat to line that up. I'll grab another pair, again turn them glossy sides together, line them up and then position them on the laminating pouch. Leave about two centimetres to, or a centimetre and a half between the two pairs. I'll then close up the laminating pouch carefully so I don't disturb what's in there and then I will run that through my laminating machine. Once that's gone through, hard to see here because obviously it's transparent, but hopefully you can pick out where those um, pockets are. I'm going to start trimming this up and the first trim I'm going to do is actually going to open the pockets up. So I'm going to trim along the top of those two um, pockets. Then I'm going to trim around the remaining edges, leaving about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. So basically what happened with um, that laminating process, process is because the um, glossy sides were together they've resisted each other and obviously the adhesive side of each of the laminate pieces has fused together. So we need to leave some of it connected around the edge but obviously we want to trim, a, trim that off at the top so that we've got an opening. And there we go, there's my first two pockets. And you can see, because I trimmed across the top, it's opened up that air pocket. Okay, next up I will show you how to make the insert. What I did is I took an A4 sheet, folded it in half, and then in half again. Then I unfolded it, and trimmed off around about a centimeter from the open edge, not the folded edge. I'm basically just making sure that it will fit in the pouch, so I'm remembering those measurements I had earlier, which is around 10 and a half and 14. Then I unfold and refold on the short line and again just trim off a bit from the open edge. There we go, so I've now got four reference cards on one sheet of A4. I'll ink up my stamp. And then I'll make an impression on one of those reference cards. 
Now of course you could just uh, stamp a load of blanks, you could even just laminate a load of blanks. When I laminate this one I'll have three blanks. So you can interchange your stamps in your storage system. Obviously if you wanted to fill them all up you could stamp it all now before you laminate it. Just using one more laminating sheet and popping that through. When it's done, I'm going to trim it down to the size of the reference card, not leaving any laminate around the edge. If you did need to write something on these afterwards, obviously you'd use a, an alcohol marker or a permanent marker. Before you store your stamp, obviously make sure you've taken all the ink off. That can then fix to the back of your reference sheet. And then that whole thing gets slid into your storage pocket. Cool, isn't it? I'm hoping to do it for the rest of the collection, but uh, let's see how time goes. But for now, that's my Stampscapes stamps sorted. So from a mess of unknown blobs of rubber, just a little bit of two-way glue on the back, and then your laminating pouches, and it's a beautifully organised stamp collection. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure having your company. While you're here, feel free to check out these other videos from me. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel before you leave today so that you'll get notifications of any new videos I upload. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.